Hello guys and welcome back to another episode. So today we're going to talk about Enhancement Shaman's PvE guide for patch 815. So the latest guide I made was Elemental Shaman and now I was like, well, if you make an Elemental Shaman, you should probably also do Enhancement Shaman because both specs are fun and quite different. I mean, one is ranged, one is melee. So this time we're going to talk about Enhancement Shaman for PvE guide for patch 815. So as you can see on the screen right now, the first thing we're going through is the stats, then we're going through the Azerite, then we're going through the talents, and the last thing is the gameplay. And what I mean with gameplay is like, what is your normal rotation? What is your opener? What should you do when you actually play Enhancement Shaman? What should you focus on? And etc. etc. So let's start with the first thing and start talking about stats. So here we are uh, about the stats. So first of all, I'm going to talk about recommended stats and then simming the stats. So let's start with a recommended stat for enhancement shamans. So the first stat is going to be haste. Haste is like a overall the most coolest stat for enhancement shamans. I mean, it's like Omega. So listen carefully because haste does a lot of things for you. First of all, it makes your attack speed faster. And the faster your attack speed is, the more Stormbringer, the more Stormbringer, or it's called the Storm, Stormbringer stacks will appear. I mean, prox, it's the right word is prox. So Stormbringer is a fact that every time you attack, your weapon attacks, you have a 5% chance to actually, to actually reset the remaining cooldown on Stormstrike. And it causes your next storm strike to deal 25% additional damage, and it also reduces the cost of, uh, of it by 100 of Maelstrom, 100% of Maelstrom. So you can say the more haste you have, the more pro procs of Stormbringer you have. Also, it gives you more procs of Wind Fury. So Wind Fury is where when you attack, sometimes your att your attacks, your attacks have your auto attacks has a chance to to deal the same damage three times. So it deals one attack. And then it also deals two additional. So instead of just one attack, it's like three attacks. Um, so, and that's each. You can say every time you attack, also you have a chance that that also happens. Also, it increases increase the generation of Maelstrom because you have the passive called Maelstrom weapon that every time you're using, every time you attack, auto attack, you or wind fury attacks you generate five maelstrom so you can say the more haste you have the more attack speed you have the more maelstrom you also get also it decreases your global cooldown down you can actually decrease it down to 0 0.75 seconds and also <laughs> it reduces the cooldown of storm strike rock biter crash lightning overcharge and flame tongue yep you heard it it's going to reduce the cooldown of all that spells. So in all in all, you can say haste is really a cool, very cool spell. Uh, spell, stat, stat, stat. The next one is Krieger Strike. And the reason for Krieger Strike is because you're dealing so much fast damage. So the more haste you have, the more chance of course you have for getting critical strikes on all your spells and attacks. And this is like a cool thing because you're going to have a lot of spells out. You're going to probably be one of the classes in the game that is dealing you know most damage all the time not not overall most damage but you know you are going to have so many attacks out all the time so do 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 all the time and critical strike will just increase all the chance of all your hundred spells to actually more crit and it, it's cool it's a it's a fine thing it doesn't do anything special more than that it's just making all your spells crit the next one is versatility it increases your flat damage Basically, it's just increasing your healing, you increase your damage, and that's pretty much it. The next one is Mastery, and Mastery is increasing, well, well, as Mastery is actually saying here, it increases your chance to trigger Stormbringer and Wind Fury by 0.64%, very low percent, and it increases all your Fire, Frost, and Nature damage you deal by 16. And of course, the more Mastery you have, the more it will, of course, increase both the proc chance of storm ring and wind fury and of course the damage you deal with fire frost and nature damage haste is still better 
for generating Stormbringer and Pin Fury because it, it will make your attack speed faster and equal that means more attacks. And no matter what, you're going to have some mastery, so it will still be increased. Um, the main thing about mastery is that it will increase your fire, frost, and nature damage. So for single target, haste is actually the best for single target. And for you can say for AoE damage, mastery is actually the best one. So if you're going to go against a big group of monsters, mastery is the best one, best one because when you're using um, what is it called crash lightning, it's it's basically using um, so when you're using crash lightning, you know your AoE spell where you kind of crash the lightning in the in the ground. It's dealing nature damage, and that means mastery is actually increasing the damage of your nature damage equal crash lightning. So, for example, you can say single target. I would say I would say single target all around haste is probably the best, but for directly AOE damage, it goes to be mastery. And for some reason, I found on a lot of places that agility is like the last stat. I don't really understand that because agility should be, I mean, kind of increasing your attack speed. Uh, I mean, not attack speed, sorry, your attack damage overall. So, but again, no matter what, you're going to get more agility every time you get more eye, eye levels. So, who cares? But again, if you want to have the best stat for you and only you, you should sim your stats. And what I did was I simmed my character and um, my enhancement shaman and what it what the raid bot simming actually told me is this list here that it want me to have more agility than critical strike than versatility mastery and haste and the funny part is that the recommended stat from different websites is saying haste crit versatility but my simming is actually saying agility crit versatility so you can see the recommended one and then simming has both critical and versatility as number two and three but my simming is actually telling me to focus on agility and my and the recommended one for a lot of websites is saying haste so that's kind of thing but there is a tricky thing because some azerite traits can actually also ju just finish the whole one I, I would say sim your character if you want to exactly have the per you can say the pre precisely stat for you Boom. But for some Azerite traits, they will actually change your damage and it will also change how you actually use stats. For example, the most popular Azerite trait for all Enhancement Shamans is this one here, Primal Primer. Melee attacks with Flame Tongue, to, uh, Flame Tongue active increase the damage of the target takes from your next level ash by 161, stacking up to 10 times. So that means it will go up to 1,600 additional damage. This is quite good. Um, and the cool thing about this one here is that it actually, the mastery is actually increasing the damage on Primal Primer. So if you're playing with Primal Primer that you should do, then your, your stat rotation is actually going to be mastery as number one and haste as number two. I mean, this, this is quite cool because Flame Tonk is reducing the cooldown by haste. So that's why you also want haste. So the lower cooldown, the more haste you have, the lower cooldown on Flame Tonk you have. So again, if you're playing with Primal Primer, that most of you should do. I mean, it's probably the best Azerite trade in the whole Enhancement Shaman. It's going to be Mastery, Haste, Crit Versatility is both the same, and then Agility. But again, Agility is like a primary stat. So again, if you're playing, I mean, Sim your character, see what the simming is telling you, else you can see the recommended on the right side. And if you're playing playing with Primal Primer, Mastery should be your number one stat. I know it's a lot of different information, but that's how it is. So that is the stats. I hope you feel more informed now and not confused. Let's go to the next part that will be Azerite Traits. I just forgot Azerite Traits. So here we are on the Azerite trade list. So let's go through the outer ring first, and then we have the inner ring. So for the outer ring that is going to deal the most DPS on paper, we have number one, Primal Primer, as we just talked about. So mini attacks with Flame Tongue active increase the damage of 
the target takes from the next level ash by 161 and it will stack up to 10 times equal 1615 15 yes 15 um this one here is probably it's changing your stat rotation that you want more you want more mastery because lava lash is a fire spell that mastery is increasing and then the next one you want to have a haste so you can say this one here is the most popular and give you on paper most dps the number two one we have is natural harmony and the cool thing about natural harmony is actually let me see you yes, see this correctly the cool thing about natural harmony is that it has quite a lot of things dealing fire damage grant 128 critical strike for 12 se seconds dealing frost damage grant 128 master for 12 seconds dealing nature damage grants 128 haste for, for 12 seconds and what for example blood molds that will show directly a website that will show directly the dps you get from different asy traits is saying that this asy trait here is number two on the dps if you actually are having these talents so if you're using lightning shield forceful winds and ascendance if you're using these three talents then natural harmony is actually the number two as a right trade that deals best damage or will increase your damage by number two so primal primal number one natural harmony number two but only when you actually have lightning shield forceful winds and ascendance and the, the, you can say the, the reason for why here is that you have um, lightning shield is giving you nature damage forceful winds when free uh, what do we have it here uh, wind fury cause each successful wind fury attack within 15 seconds increase damage of wind fury by 80 and a maelstrom generate by one staying up to five times um not quite sure why this one here is actually helping natural harmony but ascendance is also but for some reason on paper blood mold is saying that natural harmony with these three talents here is the number two as a right trader is dealing most damage yeah then we also have the outer ring number three that is of course treasurers and treasurers is of course i mean i probably have it on every guide i make at the moment because it's just a good it's a very good as right traits it gives you increasing of agility by 345 when you're above 50 percent health I mean that as long as you're over 50 percent health that damage boost you get from it is enormous but again primal primer and natural harmony is still shining over it and of course natural harmony is shining a lot if it has those three talents else it's just shining it's still i think it's still primal prime natural harmony is still number two and number three and number three natural harmony is just without these talents so you can pretty much say that i know it can sound pretty confusing with nature of harmony but that's how it is so we have prime primer nails to harmony and treasurers that was the outer ring so let's take the middle ring now the number one is overwhelming power as always i i don't think i've i mean all the last 10 guys i've been creating i think overwhelming power is number one it's a very overpowered and cool and re really good as i trade it gives you so much haste and a really nice burst when it actually procs number two is god river god river is pretty much the best as well trade you have a single target damage and then you have number three is heat my call that has the best multiple targets damage god river has an execute phase when it goes when the target goes below 30 percent health so on bosses that stays alive for a long time under 30 percent health it deals a lot of damage and heat my call just deals a lot of damage all the time and also do splash damage so that's why the heat my call is best for multiple targets and god river is best for single targets but then you also have overwhelming power that is like overall the best one so that was all the s right traits the next part we're going to talk about is the talents so let's switch over to the talent screen and talk about that let's talk about the talents so I'm going to talk about the talents for each row. I will talk about each scenario you can use each talents for. So the first row we have is my recommended one. The best one I actually like is Lightning Shield. So Lightning Shield is 
The reason for why I like Lightning Shield is it's very flexible and it deals a solid damage. You don't really have to think about what you're doing, it's just in the background you just have to reactivate the buff every hour and that's pretty much it. You also have Hot Hand that is very good for pure, pure single target. The only downside of Hot Hand is that sometimes it makes you, when you have Flame Tongue active, it makes your Lava Lash cost no Maelstrom and deal 100% increased damage. But the problem is that sometimes in your rotation you don't want to use a Lava Lash and you actually want to use Storm Strike or Crash Lightning or another spell right now and not Lava Lash. So you can say sometimes when it procs is actually wasted because right now it's not the time you want to use Lava Lash. And of course then you could say well should you not use it but I mean the problem is that even though it procs it will not deal more damage than Storm Strike. So even with the 100% it's, it's dealing still lower damage than Storm Strike. So sometimes it can be feel like a waste and you don't really use it right now but and that's where in ISC Lightning Shield is more flexible and can always be used. Bowler Fist is also quite fine. Um, it, it makes your Rock Biter better and that means you're going to use your Rock Biter more and that will mean that you have less global cooldowns for the rest of the things. So I don't really like it but I would say in my case I would recommend Lightning Shield in any case. The next one here I'm recommending Forceful Winds in both single target and multiple targets. So Forceful Winds is increasing your, you can say every time your Wind Fury attacks it will deal 473 damage so if you use, the cool thing is that your auto attacks and Storm Strike and Crash Lightning can actually proc Wind Fury and that means if Storm Strike proc Fury it will deal two times additional from Storm Strike, it will deal two times 473 damage. But with Forceful Winds, every time it it has a successive attack, it get your get your stack that can stack from one to five, where the next mail, well the next Wind Fury attack will deal 80% more damage, can stack up to five times, so that's, that's you know it's the 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. And then it also gives you more mail strong, so you actually can use your attacks more. So by stacking up, so for example, if you're saying that you have forceful wins, it will give you 80, 80 percent more damage each by each stacks. That means five stacks will give give four hundred percent damage. That means that you will save four hundred and seventy five, four hundred seventy three physical damage on Winfury, four times bigger. That's one thousand eight hundred ninety two. So instead of Winfury is actually dealing one four hundred damage, it will de deal one thousand eight hundred damage. I mean that's a quite a boost so if you can hold up that stack it will help and of course that also means the more haste you have the bigger chance you have to hold it up because haste will help you get more procs of win free of course mastery also because of it has this 1.41 percent for increasing it so in that case i'm recommending forceful wins for both single target and every rotation for the next row here, Spirit Wolf, Earth Shield, Static Charge is up to you. Static Charge is cool in Mythic Dungeons where you want a more stun. In all other scenarios, take whatever you want. If you want a free healing or if you want to have a Spirit Wolf that increases your speed and also reduces the damage you take, probably the best one in most cases, but that's up to you and your team. For the next row down here, I'm recommending using Searing Assault. It's easy, it's good, and it deals good damage and you don't really have to think about doing anything externary. So I would say in my case I would always go with Searing Assault and it has a really good solid damage. Hailstorm, I'm not really glad for that one, that will meaning that I have to use one more additional global cooldown that I would have to put in Frostbrand in my rotation and nah. So I would go with Searing Assault no matter what. For the next row here, it, again it's up to you. But I would personally use Nature's Guardian for kind of helping me to get another chance without dying. On the next row, you could say that in most scenarios, if you want to have a burst, and also you want to have a burst multiple targets, Sundering is the best one and it's really what Enhancement Shaman is lacking of. You need some kind of a burst LE damage. And that's where Sundering is really helping you out. But also Sundering has a cooldown on 40 seconds, so in scenarios where you have to switch between single target AoE, single target AoE, single targets, 
is actually not super good and that's why crash lightning can help you so maybe you could say with a dungeon crash lightning can maybe be more benefits but still in my case i would i would pretty much take sundering in any situations yeah even though if it's a raid on mythic dungeon i would go with sundering because it deals such a lot of damage i mean you even storm strike that is your main damage ability deals 7000 damage sundering is actually dealing 11000 so I, I would still say go with sundering but crashing storm can also be good if you have a tendency to switch between single target and multiple targets a lot but again sundering is my favorite one for the next slot down here we have ascendance and elemental spirits Elemental Spirit can be really cool in Mythic Dungeons because it reduces the cooldown of Fairy Spirits and it also gives them the... it imbues them with Fire, Frost and Lightning um, enhancing abilities. So it also enhances you... it also enhancing your abilities. Um, and also the cool thing about it when it, they actually now deal Fire, Frost and Lightning damage is that it also gets the benefit from your mastery. Um, you can see here. And uh, so you can see this one here, enhancing elements. So it'll actually give them the bonus also from your mastery. And it's quite cool. And it, I mean, it reduces the cooldown of your spell. So a really good spell. Um, but probably in a raid, um, you can say pretty much in single target all around and so on. I would probably say Ascendance is number one. And Elemental Spirit is number two. But Elemental Spirit is really cool in Mythic Dungeons. And Ascendant is pretty cool in all other stuff. The, the downside about Ascendance is that it has a three minute cooldown. So it's a really long cooldown. And it's only active for 15 seconds. But while you have it actually, it reduces the cooldown of Storm Strike by 66. And transforming your auto attacks on Storm into Wind Attacks, which bypass armor, that's also a big buff and it have a 30 percent a 30 yard range so it gives you a really good burst window single target you can say um yeah so elemental spirits kind of a wee damage mythic dungeons and ascendance for more single target damage so i would say if i go into mythic dungeons i would say elemental spirits if i go into a raid i would take ascendance pretty much so i mean this is the whole spec i would normally go with in no matter what the only thing i would change is mythic raid mythic raid and that's how it is yeah so i mean that is pretty much the talents a lightning shield forceful wind spirit wolf searing assault nature's guardian sundering and then elemental spirit mythic and ascendance for raid so that was the talents i'm recommending as playing an enhancement shaman so let's go to the last part that is gameplay and rotation so here we are as a dummy talking about the rotation and the opener so let's start with the opener and talk about that so the funny part is that enhancement shamans doesn't really have a big opener normally you have like a big complicated opener for some classes but as an enhancement shaman it's actually quite easy Basically, when you are in for the next 20 yards and the tank is going to pull, so the tank and you are running at the same time to the bus, when you are at 20 yards exactly from the bus, what you are actually going to use is that on that running time, so you can see here, I'm standing over here, now I'm running, and when I get into the front, into the 20 yards, you can see now 20 yards, Rockbiter, Flame Tongue, Feral Spirit, Storm Strike. That is the opener. That is basically the whole opener. That means you run the water target to get up to the bus. Rock Biter, Flame Tongue, Feral Spirits, Storm Strike. That is everything. Because those, you can say, three seconds where you're just running toward the bus. You want to use a Rock Biter to get Maelstrom. You want to use a Flame Tongue at the same time for getting the buff and making the target burn. Then you want to use your Feral Spirits just before the first the melee, melee attack and then you're attacking and hopefully you're getting enough you should get enough maelstrom to use storm strike after that you're basically just going to your normal rotation and the normal rotation is quite easy because 
If you're playing with Syringa Soul that I recommend, you should use Flame Tongue every time you can. I know if you're playing without Syringa Soul, then you don't want to use Flame Tongue all the time. You only want to use it every time it's, it goes off. But when you play with Syringa Soul, you want to use Flame Tongue all the time because you want to make it you want to make it active on the boss. So you, you want to burn Syringa Soul on the target all the time. So that is like priority number one. Use Syringa Soul and Flame Tongue every time you can. Storm Strike is like also number one in pure priority. Every time you can use Storm Strike, use it. I mean, it's it 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 sounds basic as it is. Use Flame Tongue every time you can. Use Storm Strike every time you can, and that is your two main rotation in your spells. Then you also have your Rock Biter and Lava Lash. Rock Biter and Lava Lash is like two spells you use when you not have anything else to do. So Flame Tongue and Storm Strike are both on cooldown. Then you want to use either Rock Biter or either Lava Lash. You can say if you are a, if you are on, for example, if you're below, if you're below 70 Maelstrom, then you want to use Rock Biter to get more Maelstrom up and stack it. But if you already have a lot of Maelstrom, like from 40, uh, 40 to 70, you already have a high amount of Maelstrom, then you actually want to use Lava Lash. Because Lava Lash is dumping down your Maelstrom and Rock Biter is putting up your Maelstrom. But you want to use Lava Lash before you actually use one of your stacks on Rock Biter. Because Rock, Lava Lash is dealing more damage than Rock Biter. So you want to use, because if, for example, you used all your, so for example, imagine that you use all your Rock Biters and now you use a lot of Lava Lashes and oops, now you don't have enough energy to use a Storm Strike. So you always want to use Lava Lash like you could say first, and then you want to use Rock Biter after to get use of your Storm Strike. I mean, basically, forget what I'm saying. Just use every time you can. Every time Flame Tongue and Storm Strike is on cooldown, you cannot use them. Use Rock Biter or Lava Lash, but never overcap with your Maelstrom from Rock Biter. So I would say never use Rock Biter when you're above 70 Maelstrom. And every time you're over 70, just spam Lava Lash. To get to get use some of your maelstrom because don't just don't just sit and wait before your storm strike is ready because I mean rock biter only have four second cooldown and it has two charges so don't worry you will you will get enough of maelstrom but never overcap maelstrom from rock rider so you can say every time I have a flame tongue and I have storm strike on cooldown use rock biter to generate generate some more maelstrom and use level ash to dump it and then use again storm strike and flame tongue every time you can do it. So again, just to put it in your head, use Flame Tongue every time you can, use Storm Strike every time you can, use Rock Biter when you when you don't have a lot of Maelstrom, use Level Ash when you have a lot of Maelstrom, you just need to dump, and use again Flame Tongue and Rock Storm Strike every time you can. And that is pretty much your rotation. Boom. And every time there's more than two targets against you, every time there's more than two targets, so plus two, you want to use Crash Lightning also in that rotation. Because Crash Lightning is making, it says here that uh, 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 hitting two or more targets in hard your weapon for 10 seconds, causing Storm Strike and Level Edge to also deal 1400 nature damage to all targets in front of you. So every time there's more than two targets, use Crash Lightning. And then every time you now use Storm Strike and Level Edge, it also deals damage to everyone in front of you. But if there's not two targets, then never use Crash Lightning. Then you can just put it away and never use it. But if there's more than two targets, use it. Pretty simple. So again, let's take the opener just for one time more for the Queen and you United Kingdom. Running toward the target, Rock Biter, Flame Tongue, Feral Spirit, Storm Strike. And then back to the normal rotation. Every time I can use Flame Tongue, I want to use it. Every time I can use Storm Strike, dump my Maelstrom at level S, Storm Strike, Rock Biter, Flame Tongue, Storm Strike, Storm Strike, level S, Rock Biter, level S, Rock Biter, level S, Rock Biter, Storm Strike, Flame Tongue. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Use it Flame Tongue every time you can, use Storm Strike every time you can. Use Rock Biter when you don't have enough Maelstrom. 
use Red Avalanche to, to dump when Storm Striking is ready. Also, if you're playing with Elemental Spirits and Sundering, use Sundering every time you can, just every time you can use it because it deals a lot of damage. Every time you can use Feral Spirits, use it because it deals a lot of damage. The same if you're playing with Ascendance, pretty much the same. If you have a Burst window, use it and you have 15 seconds, a lot of Burst. And you can also, in your opener, you can put it in also in your rotation when you're opening up against the target. So for example, if you're playing with Ascendance and you want to use your opener, then it's pretty much the same opener. You just use Rockbiter first, Flame Tongue, Feral Spirits, Storm Strike, and then you use Ascendance. And the reason for why you use Ascendance as the last spell is actually because it's resetting the cooldown on Storm Strike. So if you just used Storm Strike and you're using Ascendance after that, it actually re resets the cooldown on Storm Strike and you can use it again. Quite cool. But that is pretty much the opener. I mean, and your rotation. So that is pretty much it. So that was the rotation. So I hope you enjoy this guide. I mean, I pretty much try to explain the stats as a right talent and gameplay through the way I do. So I mean, you should be pretty good now playing enhancement shamans on which stats, gameplay and so on, but how to play the spec. So I hope this guide was helpful for you. So leave down a comment if you like this guide, like it if you like the guide, else let me know in the, ch in the chat if chat in the comments if you have any comments about this video. I mean, I'm open for everything. So thank you guys for watching. Have a really great evening and see you in the next one.